What's up everyone, this is Tyson. Recently I got a new machine, the SMX2100, and it's in the middle of getting set up right now, but I thought in the meantime it would be cool to bring back one of our older parts, the Titan 123M, and go over a few programming techniques on this part. This is programming for the 9-axis, so it's some high-level stuff, but I'm going to explain it very easily so anybody can do it on Mastercam. So before we get started, I want to shout out Orbital Computers. They make some really powerful machines for CNC programming, for CAD, CAM, especially when you get into multi-axis, 5-axis, 9-axis, the crazy programs that Barry does on the Heller. Even if you're just starting programming, they have everything from lower end to higher end machines. So if you need a computer for CAD and CAM programming, make sure you check these guys out. You can't just use a regular gaming or just a regular computer because the type of computer, the graphics cards that it uses, it's completely different for CAD and CAM work. So orbital computers, check them out. So let's jump into our program. So I got my 123 program up here. It's an older program from about two years ago since I last did that video. It's a really good video though, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. So I wanted to go over this program. It's got a couple of cool little things in there. I wanted to tell you about the toolpath on the front side and then on the second side, and just a couple of general tips and tricks for the nine axis. So the first pass I'm gonna cover is gonna be the 3D OptiRough pass that I use to rough out the material on the front side of the part. So this toolpath, when you program it, it's technically not a multi-axis pass. But Mastercam does something cool depending on the setup of your tool and your machine. So the way I have this tool set up right now, it'll actually use the spindle along with moving the tool. So it'll actually take advantage of the nine axis. And you've seen me use this toolpath before. I think a recent example that I used this toolpath on was that octagon pass that I did where I just ripped out material from the center of the part. That's a really cool video too if you haven't seen it because I basically take an end mill to the center of the part and just rip material outwards. But that was using the spindle along with the tool. So tool was helically in the middle and then the spindle started spinning along with the tool moving upwards. This is gonna do something similar with the tool cutting on the outside while the spindle moves along with the tool. So I'm gonna go over how to program that one real quick. I'm gonna bring my toolbar right above the previous one and then we're gonna select OptiRough. And we're gonna start off by selecting our geometries. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm gonna click, click, and click. And holding down control will select any similar surfaces along the part. So click those three faces and that selected the entire outside contour. I'm gonna hit okay there. I do have to set an avoidance geometry but I'm gonna leave that alone so I can show you afterwards what I'm gonna do. And we're just gonna move on to the toolpath control and we'll select a containment. And for this because I'm cutting on the front of the part with the tool being horizontal we're just gonna select the OD of my part there, and that's gonna be the containment area. I can leave it to compensate on the inside, so I shouldn't have to mess with anything here. For our tool, I'm gonna to select our three-quarter bull nose and mill. I'm not gonna mess with any of the speeds and feeds just because I'm just showing the tool path. So if you want to know the speeds and feeds I ran for this tool, check out the video for the 123M. And here's the setup tab. So what I mentioned before, we're gonna select C-axis face, along with using the upper left of the spindle. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna use the C-axis, the spindle, along with the tool. For our stock operation, I'm gonna select our stock model, which was all of our lathe operations. And then for our cut parameters, I'm just gonna use a 20% step over, which I've already got in there. I'm not gonna mess with any of the step down settings because what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cheat a little bit we're going to go to the steep and shallow and I'm going to set a maximum depth to the very bottom floor past my radius there. And we'll set that there. And I'm actually going to do the same for the minimum depth. So select that. These are both going to be set to 2.4 inches deep. And what that's going to do is it's going to force the tool to only cut to that depth. So I just want one depth with my 20% step over. And then we have our linking tab. I can make the lead in and lead outs a little bit cleaner if I wanted. I'm just gonna make a little bit of a bigger radius for the uh, lead in. 
we'll use the same lead and lead out. If I was actually programming this, I'd probably adjust this a little bit further, but we'll hit okay. And we have our toolpath. Now, the one thing I mentioned, you can see we have a rapid line that goes to the center of the part here. So that's what I mentioned about the avoidance geometry. Depending on the part I'm programming, sometimes I like to generate the toolpath first so I can see what it's trying to do, and then set the avoidance geometry afterwards to tell it, hey, don't go into these areas that you're trying to go into. So we'll go back to our toolpath for our model geometry. And for our avoidance, I'm just gonna select the whole front of the part here. So outside and inside there, hit in selection. And then with our regenerated path here, you can see it's avoiding the inside now. We have a nice clean tool path. Tool goes around there, the part will be spinning along with it, and it starts feeding into those flutes. So, we're gonna move on to the second side. For the second side, there was a lot of facing with shell mills. I used a lot of big tools so that I didn't have to finish with smaller tools and just kind of saved a little bit of time there. And what I utilized a lot during that was the transform and rotate toolpath, which I use all the time. And what that will do is it'll, it'll let me program a 2D pass or really any pass that I want on one side. And then if I do transform and rotate, I can tell it what angle I want to rotate the part at, and it'll actually flip that toolpath to the other side. So when I post that program, it'll actually rotate the spindle and then do the exact same program on the other side. It's really convenient and it saves a lot of time. The only thing you have to watch out for when you do that kind of rotating, you have to make sure your leadouts and clearances give you enough space so you back the tool off fully before you rotate. One other thing that I had to do a lot also with the second side was because there were so many faces at different types of angles, I had to make a lot of different tool planes. And one thing I utilized a lot was the quick plane function in Mastercam. So if I right click on my part, and go to quick C plane, I can select a surface on the part. So we'll say this face surface right here. And it'll actually generate a tool plane for me on the part. It'll be listed in your planes as quick C plane. And if you want to edit it at all or move it, you can. It's already set with Z pointing outwards from the surface that I selected. So if I was to make a 2D pocket or a face pass or anything on that surface, it's already set. The one advice that I would give you, which I did not do on this part, and I kind of regret it after seeing it, is name your quick C planes after you make them. Because if you look at my tool planes, I have a lot of quick C plane one and twos there. So make sure you label them so you know what they are. So actually the tool path that I want to go over on the second side is the chamfer pass on the outside here. It's got a curve to it and it follows along there. So I'm gonna switch it up on this video and I'm gonna do a morph tool path, which is a multi-axis pass to ball track the chamfer. And I've used it a few times along the parts. One example that I have highlighted right here is when I did it to finish the radiuses on the parts. So I'm gonna show you how to program that. We're gonna to go to our milling tool path and under multi-axis, I'm gonna click unified. For our tool, I'm just gonna duplicate the tool that I have in here, my half inch ball mill. So, copy tool assembly, paste tool assembly, I'll make another one. Yeah, just pick a nice bigger holder, stick it out a little bit farther. Until I actually put it in the machine, I'm not gonna know how long I need the tool. 
But for a lot of these multi-axis passes, you actually need your tool sticking out a little bit so you don't hit the chuck or hit anything when you're rotating your tool because the tool moves a lot when it's doing these five axis, nine axis tool paths. We're gonna go to our setup tab. And for our axis combination, we're gonna select upper right I'm going to leave it under top for the tool plane selection. For our stock model, I'm going to select stock model 4. For your stock model, you want to make sure that it knows whatever material you've already removed on your part. That's all set. And then for cut pattern, we're going to add a curve. And for the style, we'll select morph. Now we'll select the first chain. That's going to be to the outside of the chamfer. So want that red arrow i'm just going to keep clicking next until it selects the outside we're going to select our second curve which is the bottom line of the chamfer both lines of the chamfer are selected if i was to move this you see we've got a blue line and we got a yellow line next i'm going to select our machining geometries we're going to select our surfaces I'm going to click all the surfaces of this chamfer i got two really small surfaces here so zoom in and click those Got our whole chamfer selected. Seven surfaces. For our area, I want the full start and end at the exact surface edges. We'll make sure that extend and trim is turned on. I want it to start a little bit further off of the chamfer. And then for cutting method, I'm gonna use a zigzag motion so it stays on the part and just keeps going back and forth. But I'll do one pass, step down, and do the other pass from the other side. So. It's going to be just a constant motion. It's not going to lift up off the part. And then for our step over, I'm going to use a 10th out step over. You're going to want to change that to however nice you need your finish of your part to be. But we'll do a 10th out step over there. I'm going to go to our extend trim tab. And I'm going to tell it to start 50% of the tool diameter. It's a half inch tool, so it'll start a quarter inch off of the chamfer. For our tool axis control, I'm going to go to our output format and we'll select five axes. So now it's gonna be utilizing the tilt of the upper spindle. I shouldn't have to mess with anything here, just have tool axis control set to surface. Depending on the angle, depending on what it's trying to do, you might have to set some limits, but I'm pretty sure we don't have to on this tool path. And then run tools, sometimes you might have to adjust this. I'm just gonna try it at auto and see what it does. For collision control, we have it set to the flute of the tool. If it comes into any collision, it's going to trim and rethink it, trim the collision only, and it's set for machining geometries. I'll turn on the second one, and that's with the holder, the shank, and the shoulder of the tool. And this one I'll set to avoidance geometries, and we're gonna select the outside of the part. So if it thinks it's gonna hit the outside of the part, then it'll retract the tool along the tool axis. And finally, on the linking tab, this is where I would adjust the lead-ins and lead-outs of the parts if I wanted to actually program this. The uh, default links, I'm gonna tell it to follow the surfaces here. I don't think it'll need it, but we'll set that there just in case. That's usually what I like to set it at when I'm first programming my five-axis toolpaths. So we'll see what that does. And we should be all good here. So I'm gonna hit the OK button. And we have a nice blue toolpath. So again, I probably have to adjust the lead-ins a little bit, but if I was to back plot this, you can see we have the tool swinging along the uh, chamfer. We have our extend a little bit there. We don't have any purple on the toolpath, so I don't have to adjust any of the gaps, the small gaps, or there's no issues with the linking. So it's a really clean toolpath. And if I was to post this real quick, and run the simulator. Got our SMX3100, I'm gonna miss it. I don't have the part in there because I only simulated this one tool because I don't wanna wait forever for it to generate. If I was to run this tool in the simulator and we slow this down, you can see the tool tilting. And if I turn on the tool path so you can see our tool. So we have our tool moving and our spindle moving along with the tool. So swinging along there, it swings the spindle and then does the other side of the chamfer, utilizing the whole machine to make those chamfers. 
So cool, I hope that was easy to understand. I just wanted to show a couple of cool little tricks on the SMX3100. I'm actually in the middle of programming and designing a new part for the SMX2100, which we just got. So I'm really excited about that. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell because you're not gonna wanna miss when I run our first part on the SMX2100. So stay tuned to our channel. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. So I got the 123 part here. I just wanted to share a few. And actually change it. So if you want to use something fancy or something disgusting, like uh, what's the one that everyone hates? Comic Sans.